D Lab, everybody. I've got new lights up on one half of the expansion of my shop. So today I'm going to start working on this Johnson Valiant that came in from Detroit. The other thing is, check out the shirt. Isn't that wild? So my brother that lives in Hawaii hand paints these shirts. This is not a silk screen. It's not a stencil. It's all done by hand. So it's very cool to be able to do this repair wearing the new Johnson Viking t-shirt. All right, so the story on the Valiant came from Detroit. The guy had never had it opened. He said the band switch was stuck, which I have freed up. But there's a real problem underneath. Somebody went relay crazy. Wait till you see this one. All right, let's give the Valiant a look over. Front panel looks really nice on it. The thing I noticed initially is the VFO. When I tune it, it'll kind of stop and then jump and tune again. That's an indication of wear and dried lube in the vernier. So to fix that, unfortunately, I'll have to pull the front panel. Let's swing around the back here and look at the chassis. This is a factory built unit. You can tell it's got the pop rivets on the tube sockets. That's really good. Everything looks pretty much original except somebody put in solid state rectifiers. And on the back, you'll see that things have been relabeled. This says receiver. There is a four pin jack here. Some other craziness going on. But when we look underneath, you'll see the real story. Now you got her flipped up on its side. We'll just start at the top of the chassis. Kind of work our way down. You can see that they've put in new filter caps for the negative bias. There's some filter caps here for the low voltage power supply, but they left the old original cap in there with the leads cut. Come down here a little further. Here's a relay, and it is actually in line with the RF output coming off the band switch. Super bad idea. There's a lot of cabling going on down here, and then we find two more relays. I'm not sure what the story is, but it appears as though they're doing some type of switching for maybe an external amplifier and antenna changeover for a receiver. I looked back in this area. You can see something exploded. I believe it was the little disc caps, and they have changed those go down into the power supply area. Remember I told you they put in solid state rectifiers. Well, when they did that, they added this big 12K resistor. I'm assuming to knock that high voltage down, but they did not change the main filter caps. So that has to happen before I will apply power to this transmitter. Also, before I try to transmit, I need to remove all of these relays and wire this thing back to stock. So when you have a transmitter that arrives in this state, what is the best way to approach the repair? With a pair of wire cutters. That's right. I'm going to get in here and remove all this. And then I'm going to put the Valiant back to stock per the print. Then we can fire it up and go from there. Well, I do have to hand it to the guy that added these relays. He came up with some little brackets. I mean, he made sure everything was secure. But the one that really blew my mind is this relay, okay? So I was trying to figure out, did he just glue it to the shield? If you look, you can see some sheet metal screw heads poking out there. And I thought, how in the heck did he do that? If you look up under the shield, you'll actually see I hope you can see it. There's little sheet metal screws. There's one right there. You see that sheet metal screw? It's actually coming in from the inside of the relay case. So for him to be able to put in those two screws, he pulled the guts out of this relay, mounted that, and then slid it back in. It's like, man, look at all the effort it took to butcher up this Valiant. So to remove this relay, I'm going to have to take the shield out. Just cut these wires out of my way. Get this out. And you can see the sheet metal screws. Pretty crafty, huh? 
So we got the first relay out and off of that shield and of course the abandoned filter cap. We're going to keep putting all of our parts in the Super Bowl. This next relay appears to only be held in by zippity doodads. Oh yeah. And of course, wire tension. So it's always easier to unmod when you don't have to document what's there. Right, here's an update on the Valiant. I've got all those nice additions removed from underside. I'll show you that in a minute. I decided to go ahead and fire it up and give it a quick test and noticed I was only getting about 20 watts out. So I removed all the 6146's from the output section. They're Jan 6146W's. They only test about 30% on my tube checker. I thought, well, maybe that's the issue. But when I was back here looking at the finals, I spotted something that was fairly alarming. Alright, so here's the RF section looks nice and clean but as I was tuning the final cap you see the cap moving I was hearing this grinding noise well that turned out to simply be the nut behind the exciter knob dragging a little bit but it was a good thing I was investigating it because as I looked right down here you look you see that screw right down there that screw is contacting the tuning cap. That was actually the screw that goes through the base of this coil to mount it. Somehow the nut came loose. She rolled away and the screw backed out and is contacting the tuning cap. Super bad situation. I cannot fire this thing back up until I repair that put in some new finals and see if I get full power out. All right, I was able to fish in a lock washer and nut on that coil base. Now we have no contact with the tuning cap. Good thing I've installed a set of used straight 6146s. So now let me take you bottom side, show you the repair work there, and then we'll give this thing a test and hopefully get full power or something close. So we'll sweep the bottom side again so you can see the updates I've made to the Valiant. Remember we had an old abandoned filter cap here. He's out. Relays are all removed. I put in a new RF output little wire to the SO239. A lot of that clutter is removed. Get down here to the power supply area. I put in new filter caps. I did find that that 12K resistor was supposed to be here. That's actually the screen feed to the 6146s. The push to talk relay that was installed was a cobble job and it was actually the wrong coil resistance. So I removed that and installed a D-Lab K1 push to talk module. There's still a little bit of cleanup over here to do, but the Valiant at this point is safe for initial test. So let's take a look at the Super Bowl. You can see she is overflowing. Got the old filter caps, relays, etc. And the solid state rectifiers have been removed and three B28s are now installed. Here, here we go. Test the Valiant. Get my grid up to speed. We are on 80 meters right now. I'm going to go to plate. Dip it, and there's my output over here. Yep, same thing. Only getting about 25 watts output. Plate current is down to about uh, maybe 50 milliamps. Go up and coupling a little bit for the fun of it. Nope, absolutely no change in output regardless of where that coupling switch is at. So I wonder if we've got something going on in that area. Remember, they had a bunch of relays and craziness going on in that area. Maybe something is disconnected. So I better take a look at that. Hopefully we can get this Valiant to put out proper power. 
All right, I found the problem causing the low power out. It was actually bad connections on the plate caps of the rectifier tubes. There was a lot of arcing in this cap, but I also noticed when it goes on, there's not a lot of tension. It's just wore out. So I will be replacing these, but right now, I believe I have good enough contact to where we can test and see if we have uh, got our power level back. See if we're getting more power out now that we have good connection on the three B28s. So we're in plate. Already got 100 watts, guys. But the thing that doesn't make sense is I'm only seeing a little over 100 milliamps of plate current. So since I have the proper power out, but the plate current's wrong, the only thing that that can be is the shunt resistor is the wrong value and I believe I looked inside it looks like somebody's changed it so I'm gonna have to fix that problem but right now the Valiant is operating there's my idle current on the audio so let's hook up a microphone and see if we can get some modulation out of it and then I can move forward with fixing the plate meter current reading and I have to still remove the face and repair the sticky VFO. Got a microphone connected. We're still powered up. Now we're going to use the push to talk module. We're going to watch our modulation current. So I'm going to key it with no audio. And now, oh yeah, yep, she's talking. Excellent. Looks like she's got plenty of forward modulation. Now let's go in there and fix that plate meter. So this is a little test set up to check the calibration of the plate current on the front panel meter. There is the shunt that I told you that has been replaced and it appears to be a 0.1 ohm. The schematic calls out 0.202. So what I'm doing is I have an external current meter in line and a power supply with a 10 ohm resistor to protect the meter we're going to bring up the power supply and look at the current on my meter versus the current on the front panel meter of the Valiant. So this will not hurt your radio at all we're simply pulling current across the shunt resistor and watching it on the external meter. So I'm going to bring up my power supply you see I have 128 mils right there let's take it up to something even let's go to maybe right around 200 if I can dial it in all right, so there, 200 milliamps, and you look at the front panel meter, and we're under 100. So the meter is reading half of what it should. So I looked through my goodies, and I found a 0.2 ohm Dale resistor. I'm going to pop this in line and see what that does for the calibration. Okay, that little Dale 0.2 ohm resistor is installed. Let's repeat our test. Bring her up to, let's just go to 200 mils again. It looks like the meter is pretty close to 200. Let's go up to 300 because that's where you're going to operate this thing normally. Looks pretty darn good. We're going to go with 0.2 ohms for the new plate shunt cal resistor. I got the new shunt installed. I'm going to do a quick check on the Valiant before I move on to the VFO repair. There's my plate current. You can see we got over 100 watts. Hello, hello one two, uh oh. But now, it seems as though I've lost modulation. Great! It's always something, isn't it? Right, I believe I've isolated the problem with the loss of audio. So this is our audio preamp section and there's a bunch of these 47K resistors. So here is the first one. He's 51K. And I'll move up to this one here. 
And that one is open. There's another 47K, shoots over here. It is also open. And there's another one up here. It's open too. And then above that is a 4.7K. And that's good. So for some reason, all the 47K resistors opened up. I don't know how I had any audio at all. So I'm going to go ahead and change them. Alright, I changed out those 47K resistors. Got the microphone hooked up. Mod current. Hello, one, two. And we've got modulation back. I can't tell you why those failed all of a sudden. Maybe they were already way out of tolerance and just barely supplying what those tubes needed. After a couple cycles they failed, but that's taken care of. Now, for the fun part, I have to pull the face so that I can pull this vernier out and clean and lube it. Yep, I removed quite the pile of components out of this Valiant, including three 6146 outputs and these solid state rectifiers. One of these rectifiers has arcing off of that pin. It was arcing over to the chassis. So luckily that was caught and I was able to clean things and install the three B28s. The Valiant is working really well now. I've got about 10 hours into the project. So we're gonna do the final checkout. I have a National 300 behind me receiving. We are on 40 meter band. Let's see how the balance working. All right, so the operator said his primary band would be 40 meter AM. So I'm going to make sure that it's working perfectly on the band that he will be dedicating the transmitter to. We are on 7.295 megahertz. NC300 is ready. Here we go. Hello, one, two. Listen to that crystal clear modulation. Hello, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, and she tunes up so nice. This Valiant dips nice and smooth. There's no funny rattles or hums. This is a really nice unit. The owners can be really happy with this one. All right, so this is a great project. Yes, it does take a lot of time because these transmitters, unlike a Fender amp, have multiple different sections that do different things. So you may repair the RF section and find out something's wrong in the audio section. Then you find something's wrong in the power supply. That's just the nature of the beast. But to me, the Johnson line is like the Fender amps. They are the king and they deserve to live on.